All right, let's just jump right in. Uh, we've got a few people missing and uh, several people who are using the opportunity to watch the lectures at home. So make sure to put on a good show for them as well. But um, as far as today goes, we are going to jump straight into uh, some of the meat of the class now and really start to learn some things uh, covering today what are called string methods. And we'll talk about the difference between a method and a function. And we will talk about some of the things you can do with string methods. And that will lead us right into assignment two, uh, which uh, is not too difficult. But each assignment you'll find uh, steps up the difficulty a little bit at a time. And uh, the idea is that by completing the previous assignments, you kind of prepare yourself for that. So a string method. We talked about functions, which is any command with the parentheses. And we talked about the fact that there are two big groups or big types of functions, right? The do something and the return something. So some functions just do something and they don't send anything back to the program. There are also return something functions, which may do something but they also return a, a value of some kind back to the program. The difference between a function and a method is that a method is something, is a, a function essentially that belongs to an object or an object type. So in this case, these are string methods, so they belong to a string. And you can see that it's a method of, of, a, of an object because it's got this notation. So it's the string object, whatever the variable is, that's a string, dot, and then the name of the method. So essentially what that does is it does something related to that, that string object. In this case, all of these methods, you can see, start with the word is. And all of these ones that start with is are asking a question about that string. For example, this one is ALNUM alpha numeric. Basically, we'll, sit, we'll return true or false depending on whether that string is all composed of letters and numbers. So if it's letters, numbers, and a question mark, it will return false. If it's all letters and numbers, then it will return true. Let's look at how that plays out in an actual coding situation. So if I have a variable that is a string like this, str text equals bill, and I want to find out, is that alphanumeric? I would say the name of the variable, str text, because it's a string method, dot is alnum. And then notice there's another set of parentheses that goes with this function. And then the outer set of parentheses belongs to the print function. So all this is going to do is print true or false to indicate whether that whole string is composed only of letters and numbers. So what do we predict, true or false? What's it going to say? True. A lot of very timid trues here. So yes, you're all right. Okay, so it prints true because it is alphanumeric. So alphanumeric implies that it can be alphabet or numbers. If I do this, still true. If I add a hyphen to it, it's no longer true because I put in a character there that's not alphabetic or numeric. So these string methods, we've got a ton of them. In fact, this is just a few, it's like half maybe of these is methods. And they're used to test different qualities of strings so that you know in your program the kinds of things you can do with them. Because if a string is numeric, let's forget decimal right now, that's a confusing one because you would think that that is any number with a decimal point in it. It's not. It's, it's almost identical to numeric. In fact, it's just a little bit more narrow. Numeric includes 
uh, also Roman numerals, interestingly enough. Um, numeric uh, is, is all numbers, right? So including this is different a subset of that. So we've got all of these that tell us different things. So if we wanted to take a string variable and see if it's okay for us to add that to an integer, and we didn't wanna get an error, we might check first using is numeric or is decimal to see if it's okay to add. And then we would go ahead and do it if it was, and if not, we can avoid the error by not doing that thing. So that's a return type of method. Okay, so just a little bit more detail. Again, you can find a lot of these pages on the uh, function reference in Canvas. And if you can't, if you ever look in the function reference and you can't find a, a function or a method, you can always just Google Python is numeric and it will tell you, you'll come right up with a page that tells you all about it. And that's the easy way to do it. I don't want you to feel bad when you, when you look stuff up because the reality is when you're coding, even if you hit like the highest professional level, you're still going to look stuff up all the time. My son worked in a, in a not top secret lab, but a classified secret level lab two summers ago for an internship. And he wasn't allowed to have any internet access in the lab because of what he was working on. And he wasn't allowed to take his cell phone in there. He said the hardest part about that job was coding without access to all the online resources. And he's a great coder, right? So uh, the purpose of telling you all these things is never going to be so that you remember or memorize all of them. What I want you to get a sense of is these things exist and kind of how they work and how to understand the information that you're going to see out there when you see things like this so that you have the ability to look it up and grow your own knowledge. So you can see none of these have any parameters associated with them. Nothing goes in the, in the parentheses because everything you need is here. It's just saying string is it alphanumeric. And those are return types of functions or methods. So here are even more of those. They all start with is, so you can almost always recognize them pretty easily. And they're all return type. So if we want to do things to strings, there are a whole bunch of methods for that too. Here are a few of my favorites. str.upper translates the whole string into all uppercase letters. Lowercase, lower does the same thing. Strip, my favorite one. Not as exciting as it sounds, but it does take the space off of the front and back of the string. So if you have a string that has extra white space, spaces or carriage returns or something in it, it'll take those off trim them both off the front and the back of the string. Who cares about that? Why would that be important? Well, it is actually very important because, for example, one of the most frequently messed up things is when a user copies and pastes their password into a program. Guess what they often accidentally copy and paste with their password? A space. Have you done that before? I, I, it happens to me all the time. Right, but a smart program says you're not gonna put a space at the end of a password, and so you strip that off. So you can use that single command to make sure that your users aren't messing up their own passwords. Of course, if you do that, you wanna make sure that you don't allow them to create a password with a space in it in the first place, right? So you use it when you create it, you use it when they do it. You can always use these too to make sure that everything's lowercase, like you can use a lot of these things to protect your users from themselves. We're going to spend a lot of time in software development learning how to protect our users from themselves. And you'll, you'll think you have written an airtight program. You're like, this is uncrashable. And then you take it to your mom and you're like, mom, type your password and she will crash it first try every time. If you want to do usability testing on your program, take it to your mom, take it to your grandma, take it to your grandpa. Anybody like... 40 and up is probably going to be able to crash your program like like that. So that's how you that's how you do usability testing. So swap case, if it's uppercase that makes it lower lower upper replace, you can take you can find 
a word in a string and replace it with something else. And remember, these are do something type methods, but they also may return something. So for instance, if I say, Bill is a nice person, and I want to change that out, I might say str new text equals str text replace using that string function. And I'm gonna replace person with animal, okay? So what I'm saying here is in this text, I'm going to replace person with animal, but it's not actually going to change this, what's in this box. It's not gonna change what's in that box. It's gonna take what's in that box and it's gonna pull it out, do the replacing, and then it's going to assign it. It's gonna return it to a new variable. So this is, this is still the same. This is the new text with the replaced text. So if I wanna print that, I'm gonna print str new text. And then you can see it's replaced person with animal. Period intact, it just does string for string. Now if I have a if I have something in there that it doesn't find, then it just doesn't replace it. Okay? So if it doesn't find it, it just doesn't replace it. So that's how str dot replace works and find works in a similar way except it doesn't replace anything what it does is it finds the first character of the match word or phrase or whatever whatever matches finds the first character of it and it counts one two three four until it gets there so it returns the position in the string how many characters over that is and what you can use that for then is to split the string up. You can replace it. You can do all kinds of things after that. We will be doing a lot with replace and find and more advanced string manipulation later in the class. But we're going to push that on down the road because there's a lot we need to learn before we're ready to do that kind of work. String manipulation is a very important part of programming, though. So you can see an example of strip here. We've got a, a text string that is has the word banana in it, but you can see it's got a lot of white space here. If you print that or you sign it to a letter and strip it, it, it will just print the word banana instead. And then, of course, we have um, str lower and upper examples. Again, all of this is in the function reference. So we're coming to str.format. This is a more advanced way of working with strings. And it allows you to insert variables into holder placeholders within your text. So let's take a look. Now, if you remember, we had tried something like this. I am plus 47 plus years old. Okay. Now if I if I run that, obviously I get a type error because I cannot add a number to a string. I can do this and it works because I'm just putting together strings. But if I wanted to calculate this value, it's not gonna be a string. So one way to do this is with a placeholder. And if I take that text, and I do that with it, then one of the things that I can do with this is I can 
if I have a variable, I can just put it there. So let's say I have a variable called int age, and it is an integer. And I can print that age into that statement using the string dot format method. So I'll print and I will list that text dot format. And then I will say age equals in age. So inside here, I have a placeholder with a label called age. It's called a key, but a label is the same thing. And I have a variable called int age, which is 47. So string text dot format, it's kind of like the replace, but it says in the spot where you labeled it age, put that variable. So when I print that, it puts it in. And I don't have to do a type conversion and I don't have to put it in quotes. I can just use the integer, which is nice. So that brings me to this week's assignment. Anybody ever heard of Mad Libs before? Yeah, Mad Libs. It's how they trick you when you're a kid into learning the parts of speech by turning it into a game. Where they might say something like, you know, in this space, write a verb. In this space, write a color. In this space, write a noun. And it, it teaches you. And then you put it in. Then you read it to your friends. And it comes out like some goofy, weird story because you put something funny. Everybody always put like farts and bud in there and stuff like that because that's what you do when you're eight years old uh, or 47 sometimes. But um, we're, we're working on a Mad Libs type assignment for this. And the way we're going to do it is one of two ways. The first way is to use string.format. You can see this is a similar thing. I've got a, a string that's text and it has placeholders, one called ADJ for adjective and one called verb. And then I'm getting two pieces of input from the user. First, I ask them to type an adjective, and I put it in that container, str adj, verb. Let's just, um, let's simplify this for a second. Okay, so if I, Let's get rid of the inputs to make it really simple. So I've got a string of text, two placeholders. I have an adjective and a verb. And here I'm doing str text dot format, and then I'm matching them up. This is here, and then the adjective goes there. It's basically I'm linking those two things so that it knows put put the value of adjective in here, and do the same thing with verb over here. And those are always in curly braces. So when I run that, you can see it puts the words in. So now I can make it more fun, more like a real Mad Libs, if I do this. And now when I run it, it's going to ask me, type an adjective. Okay, so I type an adjective, fast, and I type a verb, it says fly. Okay, so when I hit enter, what it does is it takes those that I just typed and plugs them into the text in the right places. So that's a pretty cool thing that you can do with str.format. That is the old way of doing things. You can still do it, it has its value, it's, it's a pretty cool way to do things. But there is a new and improved way. And that is called an F string. And the F string has a few advantages. Okay, so notice this is very similar. I had this above that before, but now I need it afterwards. And the reason for that is that because you'll notice str text equals right before the quotes, the letter F stands for format. That's why it's called an F string. I know programmers are very clever. So it's, we have an F string. It's the same text, 
except that you'll notice instead of the generic placeholder names, I'm actually using the variable names directly in that spot, which means in the F string, I don't have to make that extra step of linking them together like I did in strat format, this one here, because right here, it's actually just gonna put the, it's gonna find the variable and put it in. And it makes the F string at this line. Now notice before, it builds the F string right in the, uh, builds the formatted string as it's printing it. Here, it builds it. So str text, as soon as you declare this line with the F string in it, is going to equal the text that has these values already in it. And it just becomes a regular string at that point. So that's the big difference. This, to me, is a lot simpler and a lot cleaner because now, at the end, I'm just printing out that, that text. So again, when I run it, we'll have the same exact result. Nobody will know the difference. Okay. But it, but it works in, a, in, I think, a little bit superior way.